Hey guys, have you noticed that you're lazy? You probably know that the best way to type faster is to practice more, but that's way too hard, so we have to do the next best thing, which is to practice better. Today, I'll be teaching you how to use monkey type to practice better. Okay, monkey type is the first thing you want to do is ask yourself, what are you practicing specifically, and how can you make monkey type as close to that as possible? I'll explain this by example. Let's say you're an accountant and you need to type lots of numbers real fast. First, you can turn on the this fun box to make the test only numbers. Then you could set the stop on error setting to word mode, which makes you correct mistakes. And then you could also turn on punctuation, which adds in decimals and math. Another example, let's say you're a student and want to get faster at typing up your essays. Well, you could start by setting the language to English 10k, since you're probably going to be using some of the tougher words in your essay, and then you can turn on punctuation and set stop on error to word. This is pretty good, but you could also just change to quotes mode to more closely match real sentences. That's kind of up to you. If you're a developer, there are dozens of code languages on monkey type, so you can just select the one you want to practice. Most of the code languages have some quotes if you switch to the quotes mode, but they can be pretty limited. For example, I have no idea what code Julia is, but it only has six quotes, which is probably also the number of people watching this who've heard of code Julia. But don't worry, you don't have to stop there because we have technology. Nothing is stopping you from prompting ChatGPT and then throwing the response into a custom test so you can generate all of the essays or code segments you could possibly want. Turn on show all lines if that's your preference, and you'll be practicing something that very closely matches what you'll be typing in the real world, which is a lot better than just the default monkey type word list. Okay, but let's say you want to learn how to touch type. Well, monkey type has a feature that's especially helpful for that. Open up the settings and turn key map mode to next, and set the key map layout to whatever layout you're trying to learn. Monkey type also lets you simulate pretty much every layout, which means you don't have to install them to try them out. The key map will show you the physical location of the key that you need to press on the keyboard so you can start to learn to type without having to look down constantly. Try to use the key map as little as possible and eventually you'll be able to turn it off and type purely from muscle memory. If you type enough to watch YouTube videos about monkey type, then you have probably noticed that you have certain weaknesses in your typing. For example, you might find some word or sequence of letters very infuriating, like develop. Either way, monkey type has several features to help with that. The weak spot fun box gives you more words that contain letters which you tend to typo on, which can be very helpful, but there are other tools which are more helpful if you're not really struggling with individual letters so much. One of the most underrated features of monkey type is the practice button at the end of every test. You probably haven't noticed because you restart every test after you make a single mistake, but if you press this button, it allows you to practice words that you've made mistakes on, or words that you type slowly, or both. Using this at the end of your tests, especially longer tests with more words, will be super helpful at ironing out some of your weaknesses. Another tip which applies mostly to quote mode is to set the repeat quote setting to typing. What that does is make it so that if you restart a quote while in the middle of typing it, you will start over instead of going to the next quote. This is really helpful for practicing specific words, sentences, and whole quotes. There's also a repeat button at the end of the test, which I like to use for any scores where I know I could have done better. It's not easy, but if you can restart the test after you finish it, then that's actually better than only typing the first three words and restarting five times, so you should try that. If you repeat a quote a few times, you'll probably be able to type it at least 10 words per minute faster than the first time, so it's good practice. Okay guys, I have one more thing to share, and it's a big one for practice, and you probably aren't using it, so listen up. Change the test mode to custom, and click on the change button. Then, click on words filter. If you have no idea what this is, then prepare yourself, it's a big deal. At the top of the menu, you can select the language you want to start with. I usually pick English 5k or 10k, depending on how strict my filters are going to be. What this menu does is it allows you to create a custom test using words which meet certain criteria. Min and max length allow you to specify words of certain size. For example, you can practice only longer words that are 7 to 13 characters long. Just put in the parameters you want and then click set. This creates a custom test containing all of the words that meet those criteria. You probably want to check the random box on the right side and set the mode to your preference, for example, time 60. And in this case, I now have a 60 second test which only contains words in the English 10k language that are between 7 and 13 letters. This is cool already, but you haven't seen nothing yet, okay? If we take a step back, we also have two more boxes on the left side called include and exclude. For anything you put into the include box, only words containing that combination of letters will be put into the test. For example, let's try this with ing. Like magic, only words which have ing in them have been added to the test. With the exclude box, you can exclude any pattern of letters. 
For example, we could create a test that only has words that don't include E, T, or A, which are the three most common letters in English. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can. However, what you probably do want to do is use this feature to create tests that contain words that are particularly hard for you so you can practice them extra. You could do this by discovering groups of letters that you struggle with over time, but what I'm going to do is once again use technology. This is the C mini bot from the Alt Keyboard Layouts Discord, and this funny command will give me the top 10 most common SFBs for my keyboard layout. If you don't know what an SFB is, it's just any bigram, which is a set of two letters, which are pressed with the same finger. Since you have to use the same finger twice in a row, these are usually harder to type quickly. Since I use traditional home row typing, the bot knows which fingers I use for which letters, and therefore which bigrams are SFBs, and it can tell me which ones are most common for my keyboard layout. I know that's a lot of information if you're not nerdy enough to use an alt layout, but I'm just going to put the top 10 most common QWERTY SFBs in the description, and you can use those if that's you. The point is, we can put the SFBs into the include box, and it will only give us the words that contain at least one of them. Just like that, we have a test that looks almost normal, but it's actually extremely hard. By adding letter combinations you suck at, and removing ones you suck less at, you can easily make a test that will focus on your weaknesses, allowing you to practice more efficiently. Okay, I know that was a lot of information, but you should just play around with all these things and do what you think suits you best. There are a couple more settings I didn't mention, such as master difficulty to practice accuracy and the capitals fun box to practice typing capital letters. But for the most part, I think the things I mentioned in this video are the most important. If you made it this far, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.